because our wonderful musical guest Ingrid Michelson is coming down yeah. to talk to us. So let's um, yeah, just ask Ingrid to join us. Have and a seat. so hi, yeah, just come on and sit right down. I'm Jessica. Hi. Nice to meet you. Now I have to ask you this question right away because I, on my Facebook, um, announced that I was going to be talking to you and Rebecca Starkey. One of my friends wants to know where you usually buy your fabulous hats. I do have a lot of hats. Um, I don't know. I just, people give them to me and uh, maybe like Urban Outfitters. I know that's kind of lame, but yeah, I do wear a lot of hats. I didn't realize that until somebody, a fan of mine, sort of similarly asked me, you know, where do you get all your hats? I'm like, all my hats? What are you talking about? And then I realized I was wearing one as she asked me that. I don't know, just, you know, where do you get your hats, <laughs> right? I don't have a, hat, a special hat store, if that's what you're asking. Okay, well, I guess she'll just have to go to, um, where did you say, Urban Outfitters? I've probably gotten some <laughs> hats. I mean, if I'm pressed to remember, but I definitely get things as gifts. Fans give me hats. Okay. They knit me hats, yeah. Great. Now, the way that you, quote, got your break or were discovered, this is everyone's dream. You put your music online, a music executive hears it, and all of a sudden your music is playing on Grey's Anatomy and all over prime time. I mean, what, what was that like? Well, it was very bizarre because I, um, I didn't know what exactly to expect. I, like you said, I put some songs up on MySpace, and in a matter of months I was approached by a licensing company that wanted to put um, my songs in TV and film and commercials and, and I at first I couldn't believe that it was really happening and I was like I didn't quite believe it you know and I was like okay I'll work with you guys and and then uh, shortly thereafter I got my first placement and then I realized okay this is the real deal and uh, yeah it was at first very bizarre to hear my music and under some like very like dramatic scene you know and there's my song um, yeah it's 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 strange it's I, I feel very fortunate very happy but I think the overriding feeling is one of sort of being weirded out. Weirded out? Yeah. So, I mean, has the have the past couple of years, it's just been a whirlwind. Is there one, like, OMG moment that just sticks out? There are, there are many OMG <laughs> moments. Um, but one of my favorite, it sort of happened very early on in, in my, you know, as I was sort of rising. Uh, I had played a, a show here in New York at a small place, and there were 75 people there, which was a, a lot for me at the time. And normally people in the audience were all my friends and family, people I knew, and they were it was just all strangers. And they all started to sing along with one of the songs. And I'm like, how do you guys, who are you? Why are you? Like, it was the first time I ever experienced like having actual fans singing my music. And that, you know, that moment is so precious to me because it's when I actually realized that that my music was was affecting people, you know, not like, just like my mom, you know, it was <laughs> complete strangers. Who will always love you no matter what. Yeah, exactly. She thinks I'm the most talented thing ever, so that doesn't count. But, um, but yeah, that was a really, a really special moment for me. And I mean, there's been many others that are amazing. Getting to perform at Carnegie Hall for R.E.M. was, was I, we did, a, I was invited to sing as part of a, a tribute night to that band, and mm -hmm. I got to sing one of their songs. I got to meet Michael Stipe, the lead singer. It was like a, a really amazing moment. There have been many, but... Is there anyone in particular that you want to work with one day? I love... Uh, do you know Imogene Heap? I'm not very good with music. I only listen to Top 40. Well, she... <laughs> Which means you. Somebody sampled uh, Jason Derulio? Derulo? I'm not good with names, but... He, he sampled her song, Hide and Seek and uh, sort of brought her from this like kind of indie realm to a more mainstream, like people found out about her through this guy sampling her, her, her track. But she's, she's a really interesting musician. She's like, does, produces everything herself, all on, like with, um, you know, com computers basically, like synth sounds, and she plays all the, does all the programs, all the drums, does everything herself. So I, I really, I've always been a fan of hers, but she's, she's very impressive for many reasons, and her music is just really great, so. You should look her up. She's I will. Well, Rick is looking her up right now. Uh, Jason Derulo. Derulo. Oh, Jason Derulo. Okay. Cool. Cool. Um, we have a question. In the chat room. All right. Um, chat away. Ingrid, are you planning to tour again in the UK? Oh, yeah, yeah. 
Um, sometime next year. I don't know. My my, I'm working on a record now. That's gonna hopefully be done by March, and then you need like three months press time. So then it'll come out till May, June, or end of June, maybe. And then once I think that it's gonna, it's probably gonna come out in the UK at the same time. So um, in the fall. So is your new single "Parachute" is that part of this album that you're working on? No, that was just a song that I wrote with a friend of mine uh, maybe a year ago now, a year and a half ago, and uh, this very large, like not large, physically large, but she's um, very small actually. But um, this really big star over in the UK did a version of it and uh, had a big hit with it over there. And then I, for kind of just for fun, did a, a one-off. We just r produced the track for myself, and it's really poppy, a little bit of a departure. Not that I, I mean, I know I, I play pop music, but um, it was a little bit of a bit more poppy than I usually go, but we just thought it'd be fun to do one track, put it out there, see how it does. It's not part of a physical album. It's not going to be part of one. It's just uh, sort of a very, you know, 2011 approach, just yeah. putting out one track, you know, digitally and see what happens. Yeah, and already it's super popular. Yeah, it's doing all right. What, are your, what would be an iTunes recommendation for someone looking for new music? Oh, th okay. I say I like all things that, that aren't, not that I dislike mainstream stuff, but I kind of gravitate more towards um, things that not many people have heard of. But there's an amazing artist. Her name is Jessica, not Jessica. That would be my name. Jessica, J-E-S-C-A, Jessica Hoop. And uh, her her voice is just like... <coughs> It's got so many little nooks and crannies, and it's just this gorgeous, she's gorgeous, strange melodies, but they all make sense, and they're just so beautiful, and uh, and she has a record out, maybe maybe it's half a year old now, and I, I just, I love it. I mean, How do you discover music like that? Well, I met her. I met her on a tour that I did a couple, um, a couple years ago, and so I've kept, I've kept track of her records and her music, and she, it's the kind of, for me, she's, she's the artist that when I lose faith, and I'm like, I hate what I do, I hate musicians, this is horrible. I, I put on her record and I am reminded of what I love about music, so, yeah. Wait, so have you encountered some bad things, you know, now that you've made it this big, you're the most one of the most downloaded artists, like, are there parts of the music industry that you didn't expect? Well, I, I mean, it's it is about selling yourself and you're kind of a product and you have to, you know, I don't like wearing makeup and I don't like having my hair done, and, and like, I don't like wearing heels, like, I, I, that's not my thing, but, um, that, that part of it is, is kind of, it goes with the territory, though, you know, like, I'm willing to do all these things, and, and, you know, because I, I love performing, I love being in front of an audience, and I love, I love that, and I love writing, and I love making records, and, I mean, I can do all that and not do any of the other stuff, like radio promo and dressing up and look, you know. But it's it's part of the whole thing if you wanna if you wanna keep making fans and pushing forward. I think at some point in my life, I'm probably gonna be like just making records, touring, you know, as I want and not not going all out, you know. Yeah, I mean, big. Oh, no, go ahead. Finish. Go ahead. I was saying when I'm like, you know, children and dogs and things like that. But for now, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to like be the center of something too. Like I'm not. I'm very much of a kind of a ham, but I don't, it, it, it weirds me out that I'm like the center of this big project, like the Ingrid Michaelson project, and I have like a publicist <laughs> and a booking agent and a manager and, a da -da 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 -da, and everything like comes down to me in the middle and it's a, uh, it's strange being, being, being the center of that, so. That's a good point, you know, like it's hard these days if you are a mu musician and you're really popular just to be a musician, all of a sudden you're a role model, a fashion icon. Like I heard a lot of people, you know, they loved your glasses and that that was like your thing, but. Oh yeah, and I didn't wear my glasses in, in a video and everyone's like, where are your glasses? You know, <laughs> all of a sudden like, you're changing your image. And you know, like I lost like 10 pounds recently and people are like, you're getting too skinny. You're not the same person you were. And I'm like, no, I'm healthier, <laughs> you know, and I feel better about myself. I'm not stick skinny. I never will be, but she's getting skinny and she lost her glasses. You know, I'm over her. I'm like, oh, I can't do anything. You're never going to please everybody, though, so. So yeah. that's a sign that you're doing something right, Yeah. actually. I guess. Yeah. There's always going to be someone that, that 
has a problem with what you do and yeah. it used to really bother me at first and like critics would really bother me and now I've got a tougher skin and uh, as long as I know that I'm happy and healthy and that I'm treating people well with respect and I'm doing what I love to do then that's all that matters so I, w I want to ask two questions from the chat room and then we should let Ingrid go so okay. she can rest for her for her, her wonderful yeah. rest your vocals performance. Cool rest. <laughs> um, what is the significance of the red ribbon on your uke? Oh, um, well, that actually belongs to a shirt. It's the belt to this shirt that I got a few years ago. And I was in Seattle doing a um, festival, and I had just had a new ukulele, and it didn't have an attachment for my strap that goes around the back. So I, I was like MacGyver, and I'm like, oh, I'll use this, and I'll just <laughs> lace this through, and then it worked. And I had it just for that show as a makeshift like thing to connect the, the shoulder brace. And then I just thought it looked so cute that I left it on. And I haven't washed it. <laughs> My bandmate is freaked out about that. She's like, I want to take that and wash it. Because it's been like mm, two and a half years. It's cloth, but I don't want to wash it. I like that it's like... It's got like the grunge, the rock grunge. It has yeah. character. I'm not eating soup with it. doesn't matter. <laughs> you know. and, and one last question. Um, what does the song Soldier mean to you? Soldier um, is the first track on my last record. It's the opening track. And it's basically, to me, it's just about jumping into, into something new, whether it's a relationship or a situation or anything. It's just about the idea of um, life in many aspects is like a, a war I feel like you're always fighting for something if I feel like a, a good life you're always fighting for something because th that means that you're not complacent you're not sitting being idle um, and it's just uh, about about not being afraid and about um, you know not being afraid to, to fight battles for what you want Great. well thanks so much for stopping by you're so refreshing down to earth and I really liked meeting you, so thanks for stopping by, and I know why all of your fans absolutely adore you. Oh. And Kelly K A H wants a shout out, so I'm giving Ke Kelly K A H a do, shout do out. Do you want me to do it, or you, you do it? Do a shout Who out am I to. doing a shout out to? Kelly K A H. Kelly K A H. K H H. K H H. <laughs> shout out to Kelly K H H. I don't like the word shout out. Or hi. What hi. would you call it? There you go. <laughs> You said hello. All right. Kelly KHH, <laughs> hi, and we give a big shout out to you. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome.